everybody welcome back to our channel and welcome back to another video so today's video is going to be my march 2020 zero base dave ramsey budget so if you're new around here hey y'all how y'all doing my name's shakima i'm a single mom i have four children two girls two boys one fur dog named gracie we also have a fur grand dog his name is acro Two of my children do not live at, in, at home anymore, and two of my children are still at home. So we have been doing Dave Ramsey now. It's going on our 10th year. Uh, Jackson will be 11 on his birthday, and we started Dave Ramsey when he was about a year old. So we're going into our 10th year, a decade of doing Dave Ramsey, and I'll tell you within the last two years, we really have made some headway. So if you're new to Dave Ramsey, baby step number one is to save $1,000 in your emergency fund. We have that fully funded at $1,000. Baby step number two is to pay off all your consumer debt with the exception of your home. We owe no consumer debt. The only thing we owe still is our home. Baby step number three, which is the step we're on, is to save three to six months worth of expenses which for our household is between nine and $18,000. We have yet to even make a small dent in that, but we are doing our best. Dave Ramsey says, go ahead and budget for every single penny. Give your money a name and tell it what to do. So here's how we work this. I use this MYMT personal budget sheet. It's always linked down in the description box below. Just highlight copy and paste it into your URL and it should do a direct download for you. My daughter uses this on Google Sheets. I use it in Excel. Um, this is for March, 2020. This sheet has three columns. The first column are our categories. The second column is our budgeted amount, what we think we're gonna spend. And the third column is our actual amount, what we are spending. Now, I do not do a different budget. These are my real numbers. Well, as I do my updates, you'll see real numbers. Right here, I have uh, rounded my bills to the nearest dollar. So these bills, once I start going through, are rounded to the nearest dollar, and then I'll put the actual change. But I don't um, make up a fictitious budget. I just share, this is it, real, raw, off the cuff, and all the things. So let me go down. Now, in my income category, I have payroll deposit, kids deposit, which is child support, um, YouTube payments, which is my Google AdSense, travel reimbursements, unexpected gifts, monies, blessings, or funds transfer. So for the budgeted income, I actually leave that pretty blank because I don't want to um, be counting money I don't have yet. So I will actually fill in this column once I get paid the last working day of the month. But for right now, I will take you down to my expenses. It always starts with my living expenses. So my mortgage is going up by about $5 because we did not meet escrow from last year. So instead of just paying off the escrow and keeping it at nine ten, it's just gonna go up $5, no problem. Uh, so my mortgage is gonna be nine fifteen. My um, electric bill, I actually did not round that to the nearest it's 120 and then my water bill is rounded to the nearest is $76. My telephone bill is 73 with internet being 75. Now I've got to call my internet company because we drop internet every single night and it should not be doing that in the house. I don't know if my router is older or if I need a new more stronger. We have the strongest form of internet they have because all we have is internet and we do not have cable. So this should not be happening. So I'm gonna give them a call and see if they can send a service person out to help us. We don't have any home repair. We have already paid our homeowner's insurance for the year and no lawn care just yet. Moving down into regular payments. Okay, I do not have a student loan. So I am going to strike through that option because we do not have that. I don't know why it's still there. I need to just take it out. I thought I did, but I'm using, I reuse my old clean sheet and then I just resave. I do keep Amazon Prime up there because sometimes I do order things. Pure Flix, oh, I forgot to put that in. No, Pure Flix. Okay, that was gifted to us, so there's no charge on that one. Healthways Gym, $25. 
The kid's insurance is not due yet. Taekwondo is 325. And now, last month, I had here Taekwondo Special Teams uniforms 300. Now, the kids are going to Florida. For two kids and one mom, it is going to be right at $1,200. So between now and June, because it's late June that they go on their trip, I'm trying to save $300 a month. So March, April, May, and June. I'm trying to save $300 a month, which will pay for our travel, our lodging, and our meals. So I am trying to put aside some money for that specific. All right, moving down. I was trying to see if I had anything else on my sheet. Um, I printed out last month's budget sheet just to make sure that I was able to go back and make sure I wasn't forgetting anything for this month. So I do make sure that I print out a printed copy, but I also uh, use my Excel spreadsheet. So moving down for my food expenses, we have some changes here. This month, I'm doing 300 in groceries, which I did that last time. We have four Wednesdays, so that's $60 each for four weeks. I am going to take my $60 off the top and go ahead and purchase one more summer gift card. That will give us three gift cards with an extra $10 in the um, sinking fund until I get to that next month's, which I will then take one more summer grocery card and add the extra $10 in. So again, slowly but surely, I am trying to get at, at least 10 grocery gift cards for the summer months. Um, I'm going to New York for my uncle's funeral. The funeral is not until a little bit into March, but I do have to have meals. I will only be there for Saturday, Sunday, and we come home on Monday. So I'm prayerful that $100 will be all that I need for that trip. Uh, sharing life or Saturday suppers. Sometimes we do have to buy something else because we might have ran out of what we had at home. So I'm budgeting in $50. I'm actually not going to fund this unless I actually see that I need that money. Right now, I'm going to plan into my grocery budgets, whatever we're going to have for Saturday suppers. But if I see that I'm running out or short on sides, then I will plan it in a little better. Moving down, uh, we have personal expense. We don't have a lot this month. We do have hair care, not nail care. I'm going to take that out because we don't get our nails done. We do have hair care, though. All right, so I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, $15 is for Jackson's hair cut. $15 is for mom, and I may actually even let Jackson get two haircuts this month and not do anything for mom because I bought hair products last month, so I may not need that. And sister did not get her hair done last time, so she has $30, and there's still $20 left in the um, envelope from last month, so she may be able to get a different style um, for this month or two hairdos. We'll see. Down for prescriptions, I did put up here that my benefits card will pay for the prescriptions because we've not reached our max number, so I'm leaving that. Uh, miscellaneous kids, oh, that should just say their savings. That's for their savings account. I've been trying to put um, at least $50. I've been putting $25 each in their savings every single week, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to save $200 for them this month again. Now, this is my pest control month, so I know that the guy's going to come out and spray the house, and I'm going to have to pay for that. It's $75. It always is $75 when he comes, so I'm making arrangements for that now. Um, moving down, Gracie gets her uh, allotment. She has $40 in the budget. $36 is for her food. We started getting her a different food now, and it is a little bit more expensive than what we were buying before. But she honestly loves this food that we get for her now. She didn't really like the other one. I mean, I guess she ate it. Um, but she never misses her meals now. She really, really, really loves the food that we buy for her uh, now. So that's awesome. Moving down just a little further to my transportation. I just got my oil changed in February. So I don't need an oil change to the next 5,000 miles. Right now, I'm budgeting in $200 for gas. That's $50 a week for four weeks. 
However, I'm planning this as an expense. I want to uh, move over so you can really see that note. I am planning it as an expense, but I did fill in for my travel reimbursements this month for February, and I should get a check on the 15th for $143 for the month of February as far as travel is concerned. So this rate may really only be like $60 out of pocket because of that check. So I know I'm gonna have to already pay for one week at least, and then probably a second week. So I'm looking at about $100 if I do 50 a week, but I should recoup 143 from my travel reimbursements from work. I did fill out the form this month, praise the Lord. Cannot believe I've been missing all that money, but um, the form was so difficult to fill out that I did have to get some help. And I've been using kind of a, um, my, the uh, secretary helped me. She gave me like a cheat sheet on how I need to fill it out. So I keep that with me every time. They explain it on the sheet, but it's a little bit hard to understand. So she went in and made a, a sample sheet for me to follow. So um, she created like a sample sheet with the things that I have to do for my driving. And so I've been using that sheet to help me navigate filling it out. Um, so that I was uh, very thankful that she helped me out because it was just very difficult to figure it out. But I think I got it. And also, like I said, keep that, that um, sample sheet with me. Moving now further into my last final category, which is tithe and offering or my giving, that's 500. And so remember, I tithe off of the gross amount, not the net amount. And I tithe off of every dollar that comes into my home, no matter what anybody else thinks about it. That's what we do. And then for my emergency fund savings. So I did have to take $120 out of my... Um, baby step number three to pay for my room for the funeral so i'm going to return that money back to my baby step number three once i have some extra come in i will do that so that's my plan and then also to put 200 dollars back into baby step number three for the month we'll see how it goes with all of that my total expenses are right at about three thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars which is right in line with what I was spent, uh, my expenses for last month. It's not a lot has changed. Um, my February expenses were $3,735.68. So I do want to share with you um, just a few things off the top and just kind of wrap up this video really quickly. Alrighty, you guys, so I wanted to just kind of do a face-to-face -face here and let you all know just a few things. So I still have my Life in Apples planner. Now, February didn't go the best for me as far as logging down everything. Like, I logged in most of my expenses, but I got kind of bogged down with the income taxes coming in, the ladies' retreat, and just a lot of other things that aren't my norm. So it was very challenging to kind of reconcile so many things coming in and out. So February was kind of a partial, I, I logged it all. I do know what my final ended up being, but it, just as far as logging it all in, I didn't get everything in for the month of February. With that being said, um, March, I'm still looking to do strong in March. So I went ahead and like I have um, previously said, I wrote down the expenses. I have the exterminator and then Shamika's birthday. Shamika's going to turn 30 this year. So her birthday is in March. But I also made myself a note that said I turned in my gas logs for February. So I'm very hopeful that I will be able to get that um, reimbursement middle of March. So I'm actually not coming out of pocket with all of my monies. So how it works is like this. From my house to my base, which is where my office is, um, I don't get to claim any miles. If I have to leave my office and go to a school or another a meeting or something like that, that's not my normal, then I can claim miles from my base to wherever I'm going and then back to my base. 
So it's just those few little miles, but sometimes those miles add up. Like I had a meeting this morning, so I had to drive five miles from my work, from my office, because I went to the office this morning, five miles there, then five miles back, but I had to go to a school. So the school was another 14 miles. So I was able to claim miles from there, then miles back, but not the miles home. So, huh, you know, and in March, I actually will have some additional travel things that will have to happen. So perfectly fine. If I'm reporting to a school for, a, for the day and I'm not leaving at all, then I don't count miles from to that school. So it's only if I have to go two places or more. So on some days, like um, one day next week, Tuesday, right? Tuesday, I have to be at one school for uh, some classes with my eighth graders. And then later that afternoon, I have to go to the elementary school because they're having career fair or career day. So I'm gonna head over to there and I'll be able to claim miles from my school that I'm at that day to the elementary school and back. So it, it's not very far, it's like four or five miles, but still four or five miles two or three times a week or you know, four weeks out of the month, it still adds up. So anything that I'm able to recoup that I can throw it in my gas fund is very helpful. Um, I did want to address, somebody asked in the last video, they said, um, when I was talking about, what was I talking about? Oh, the funeral and how I took the money from the ladies retreat to pay for my plane ticket. And so there was a comment that said, well, shouldn't you have taken it from your emergency fund? My thought is I already had the money allocated for the ladies retreat, but it didn't have to go for that. So I chose to leave money in my emergency fund and just take it from the ladies retreat because honestly, all of the expenses are covered for the ladies retreat. I just wanted to have a nice buffer or a cushion. And then I had planned to put some money in baby step number three. Well, I ended up having to pay for my plane ticket plus my room, plus I got to eat. And I was able to have enough without having to pull that money out of my emergency fund. If I didn't have monies laying around somewhere, then I definitely would have. Like the extra $135, um, some of that, like, let me see, $60 went to pay for my room. I still ended up taking a little bit out of my baby step number three to pay finish paying for the room, which is why I'm trying to put that money back because I went ahead and took the money for the um, plane ticket, which was 277 plus the room, which was 120. So now I'm already at 397, 400 plus another hundred to eat. And that's a light estimate. <laughs> um, prayerfully, uh, they are planning a repast. I think the hotel we're staying at has breakfast. So that'll help out a little bit. But then again, I'm keto. So will it or won't it? But anyway, um, I just chose not to pull a chunk out of my emergency fund because I did have some of that, you know, money's laying around from the income tax return that I was just going to allocate for the ladies retreat. So I felt perfectly fine about doing that. Again, um, I'll say this one more time. Budgets are very subjective. They're subjective to your income and your family. Right at about three thousand two thousand nine hundred and some odd dollars is all the money that I get. I understand that I should have a line item for every sinking fund. I have twenty seven sinking funds. I can't fund twenty seven sinking funds, but I have them prepared ahead just in case I get a little money to put extra. Not everybody has extra. So please don't make people, you know, when you're on YouTube, you put yourself out there and people can have an opinion and opinions are per perfectly fine. Suggestions are better, but don't come for somebody's budget because they're doing the very best that they can with what they have. I have not been to Goodwill since before Christmas and we're going into March. <laughs> I have I went, yes, let me change that. Let me not lie on camera. We went yesterday to drop some stuff off. I did not get out of the car. We did not go inside. 
we I had two big bags of clothes that y'all saw me declutter out of my closet and I had them riding around in my trunk and I said, nope, we're sliding over here. We put them to the Goodwill and went to do our grocery shopping. I haven't, y'all, before I would have been like, I am going to the Goodwill because I want to go. I have not. I have been constantly saving for the kids. They're watching their money go up and up and up. They're feeling really good about that. So again, am I doing it perfectly? Probably not. I'm sure I'm not even figuring it out like Dave says, but I'm doing the best Dave job I know how to do based on the class I took. I'm not Dave-ish. I'm Dave Ramsey, financial peace, get all the things. So I'm doing the best I can. You're doing the best you can. And if you're not, let me encourage you to do the best you can. But I cannot come and budget your money and tell you you're wrong and don't do this and all the things. That is very discouraging to people. And we don't want to do that. We want to lift people up in their decisions to be financially free. Because when you tell people every minute of their life that they are not doing it well, they will not do it well. They're like, oh, okay, so I can never do it good enough to please her, so I'm not going to do it at all. That breeds some self-destructive behavior. Yes, I know it's the person who's being self-destructive. That's what self-destruction means. But again, let me encourage you better than say you're doing it wrong because uh, don't do that. That's not nice. As a general rule, I do not um, block people from my channel. I just, you know, I prayed about it a long time ago. I was like, God, I just don't want to have to deal with that negative stuff. And God has really shielded our channel. We have been, we have really been blessed by our, our subscribers. So many new subscribers and we thank you for being with us. We are blessed to have you. But there was an instance just recently where I had to block somebody. And it's not because I can't take the heat or the pressure of what they had to say, but I don't wanna create firestorms on my channel with people coming to my rescue because you all love me and you know I'm doing my best. And then I just don't want that connect. I don't want any of that. So I chose to block that person. I wish them well. I pray for them. I wish they had a YouTube channel so we could see how they're doing it all right and, and it would be lovely. But um, as a general rule, I just let that stuff kind of, I, I move on. But I, I want to encourage us to, to lift people up and encourage us to do the best we can. Again, are we doing it 100% according to your standards? Probably not. But if we can say that over the time I've been doing this, I'm making progress then that's what I'm here for is the progress. So anyway, that was a long, I wasn't even sure I was going to say anything, but I just, again, let's encourage people. We're doing the best we can. My budget is my budget. Your budget is your budget. I watched one girl um, the other day. She said, oh, my, my budget is 8,000 so-and-so dollars. I said, Lord, child, I mean, I ain't seen $8,000 in, I don't know, at one time. It doesn't happen at my house, but... That, that 2,900 and whatever the dollars are, we are blessed to get it in Jesus' name. So we, we, we work it out. I get paid once a month. We do the best we can. We space out our spending so that we at least have something in our wallet every week and it works out well. My kids don't want for anything. I don't want for anything. We have food. You know, we just came up on a Super Doubles groceries this last uh, week. So that's helpful. Anything we can do to help our journey, we have been doing to help our journey. We are now on baby step number three. And you guys, we have never been on baby step number three. We would go to baby step one and then back off baby step one back off to even get the debt paid off. We were doing the yo-yo dance, but praise the Lord. He has helped us get our mind together and get our finances together. So again, remember, Budgets are subjective to that person and their household. None of us live with each other, so we don't know what's happening. But anyway, just wanted to share that little tidbit for being kind um, to one another. Anyway, like I said, thank you so much to you new subscribers. My old subscriber, my, I've been with Shakima for the long haul subscribers. You are, we, we can't even express how much we just appreciate you. But the sudden, sudden, sudden growth on our channel is very um 
amazing to me because for a very long time, nothing was moving and I would be like, God, what's happening? And it's stay the course, Shakima, stay the course. It's going to be okay. So anywho, we're staying the course. We're done for March. We hope this was encouraging to you. Let us know how you're doing on your budget journey um, down in the comments below. If you have questions, ask. We'll be happy to answer. We do appreciate you guys so very much for hanging out with us. If you've liked the video, thumb it up. Don't forget to subscribe. Share it if you think it's helpful to someone. And we'll see you next time. Bye now.